Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Please subscribe to the channel if you guys like this content. Today we're just going to go over something uh, pretty standard. We're going to look at um, the length of the market cycle and you know the case for the four-year cycle versus, say, the case of a longer cycle. Now, a lot of people like to think that it is a four-year cycle that operates around the halvings with a bear market you know, about a year or two before the halving and then a bull market for the year or two, say, after the halving. Uh, but there's also other evidence that points to potentially a longer cycle. Um, and, you know, I, I assume many of you guys have seen this before. But if you just, you know, measure from the time between this peak and this peak, it's 884 days. And if you then take um, a measured move um, between, say, this peak and this peak, it's around 1,491 days. So clearly, you know, if you, if you just look at this, the cycles are getting longer and longer. Um, so if you guys remember, I made a, um, a projection uh, on a logarithmic scale uh, a little bit ago that showed you know, potentially where Bitcoin might be headed. Um, and that was assuming a four-year market cycle, um, which I still feel like there could be evidence of a four-year market cycle. You could argue that you know, Bitcoin was just immature um, early on and it and it's really taken its time now to get into this uh, You know this cycle, but you could also argue that it has been you know It's been doing what it's doing and it's going to continue to do the same thing and that is to increase the length of e each subsequent cycle and The the case for a longer cycle would also match the fact that you know each one of these um, bull markets has a steeper or has a less steep slope as you as you move forward in time so you can see the the, the slope of this one is almost vertical and then we you know we come down a little bit to a slope like this the next slope is even lower down so if we were to assume that the, the next potential slope is going to be even you know more flat then you can imagine that you know the next peak could be somewhere way out here maybe what is going to happen is we are going to you know drop down to this orange line um, which roughly corresponds to the 200 week moving average um, so you know be, be prepared for something like that to occur and I think it's currently a little less than five thousand dollars so I think that's um, potentially on the cards for Bitcoin um, I would be shocked if we went below the 200 week moving average but obviously nothing's, um, you know, everything's fair game in, in the crypto world. Um, so, you know, it's possible that we drop back down to this orange line, which is around a $5,000 Bitcoin, and ride it kind of like we wrote it here. We, we might end up riding it for a year. Um, I mean, it could, be, it could be 2021 just before we see, you know, a, a healthy and stable Bitcoin at $10,000. And this is assuming the market cycle is longer than four years. If we were just to plot the days between peaks, um, so the days between peak, peak one and two, um, and then the days between peak two and three, and we were, you know, just to say, okay, this was a, the, we, we were to say that, you know, the, the time between peaks one and two and peaks two and three, the difference was around 75%. And if we were to continue to extrapolate that, which is dubious considering how little information we have, it, it would mean that the next peak would be around um, 2,600 days from this peak. Um, now, on a log scale, you can see that it's just, you know, it's, it looks like a line. But if we look at, you know, years between peaks, you can see that this one is a little over two. This one is around four. And then the next one might be around seven. This is assuming a constant percentage increase, which I don't know that, I mean, I, I think it's likely that it wouldn't be seven years away. Because seven years um, from 2017 would be, um, you know, 2024. Um, and I think that, you know, I think it's likely to occur um, before that. I, I could see 2023 being, uh, you know, potentially around summer 2023 is what some analysis I've done might, uh, you know, just some, like, you know, back of the envelope calculations shows that maybe summer 2020, 20, or sorry, 2023 could be a potential, um, uh, that could be the, where we have that, that mania phase. Um, in the market, um, which is still a long ways off. I mean, it's it's four year. It's a little less than four years from now, and you know, it's it's hard to really say, you know, whether we're we're gonna, you know, essentially come back up 
and see another peak in, say, the end of 2022, um, uh, or sorry, I should say the end of 2021, early 2022, or if we are going to, say, come back down to this orange line, ride it for a year, and then see an increase um, through, say, up to this point, uh, maybe maybe even, say, this, uh, this green line up here, which would correspond to around a... Two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Um, if we can, if we can reach that green line, um, if we can reach the blue line, then it'll be um, slightly more, um, maybe up to two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand. You know, if you and if you notice this, remember this logarithmic regression video has shows that each cycle the peak comes down a couple lines. So the first time the peak comes down three lines, the next time it comes down two of these logarithmic regression lines. If the next time it comes down one or two and the peak is in, say, 2023, then that would put us at, you know, a $200,000 Bitcoin or so. Um, I, you know, it, it's really hard to say one way or another um, if it's going to be a four-year cycle or maybe, say, a six- to seven-year cycle. Um, and if it is a six- to seven-year cycle, then, I mean, <laughs> that just means that the cycle following that one it, it could be, you know, it could be 10-plus years. Um, and we would start to hopefully see some, you know, well, I don't know if it's hopeful, but see some stabilization in the price um, and, and might stop seeing, you know, the same levels of, of growth. And, and you can see that just with how the, how the slopes change uh, through time. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's, I think there's a good case for a four-year cycle if, we, if we're just looking at recent memory um, and assuming that uh, we're going to go parabolic following the halving or it could be a longer cycle. And, and one thing I should note too is, you know, after this halving, we went, you know, we basically went parabolic immediately. After this halving, it actually took, you know, a half a year or so before we really saw that exponential growth. Um, so it could be that, you know, we come down here to the halving and maybe it's, maybe it's another year um, before we start to see that um, you know, that real exponential uh, growth, which would mean that the exponential growth might not start until mid-2021, um, which would then uh, put us, let me close this because I don't want to hear those um, notifications, um, which would then put us at, uh, you know, seeing a, a much longer um, cycle. If, if we go parabolic, say, in mid-2021, and then our, our slope is, you know, flatter than this one, then it could take another couple years to peak in, in summer 2023. So I would like to know what you guys think about this. I mean, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to claim that I know what's going to happen, but I just look at, I like to look at the evidence for both sides, and I, you know, it's important to be able to pivot from one strategy to another if you see that um, things might be uh, different than what you, you know, what a decent amount or a decent portion of the market thinks is going to happen. Um, so remember, you know, halvings, they don't necessarily go parabolic immediately after the halving. In fact, right here, we actually saw a drop in price, um, rode the orange curve. It's possible that we see a drop in price, ride the orange curve for a year, um, which would ultimately put us at, let's say we rode that orange curve for one year following the halving, um, which would then put us around here, which would be around, say, a $15,000 Bitcoin in summer of 2021. Um, and then moving into 2022, we might be getting to our previous all-time high of, of $20,000. Um, these are just my thoughts. I, I've spoken a lot in other videos about the difference between the four-year and the seven-year. Um, or six, six to seven year market cycle. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of put all my thoughts out there because um, I you know some people I think are interested in, in these graphs and how they uh, potentially uh, uh, relate to one another. And obviously, if you're following altcoins, then, you know, obviously they are completely dependent on the Bitcoin market. I mean, Bitcoin drives the market. And if you don't believe that, then I just don't think you've been in the crypto space long enough. Um, so I, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content, and I'll see you next time. Bye.